Hi, welcome to this Corp Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the algebraic fractions practice questions. If you need any extra help on algebraic fractions, if you go to Corp Maths and go to the videos and worksheets section and scroll down to video numbers 21, 22, 23, and 24, there's dedicated video tutorials there on algebraic fractions, so adding algebraic fractions, multiplying algebraic fractions, dividing algebraic fractions, and simplifying algebraic fractions. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, question number one. Question number one says simplify fully x over 3 plus x over 4. So here we're adding two fractions and they've got different denominators, so let's make them have the same denominator. And with 3 and 4, I'm thinking 12. 12 would be a good common denominator. So let's get a fraction with a 12 on the denominator and another fraction with 12 on the denominator. To get from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4. We would multiply 3 by 4 to get the 12. So we need to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. So 4 times x would be 4x. And next, x over 4. Well, this has got a denominator of 4. We want a denominator of 12, so we're going to need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3. So we're going to multiply both of these by 3. 4 times 3 is 12, and x times 3 would be 3x, because x times 3 is 3x. Now, this is fantastic. We've now got two fractions with 12 on the denominator. So we've got 4x over 12 plus 3x over 12. So to add fractions with the same denominator, we used to add the numerators. So 4x plus 3x is 7x. So that's going to be 7x over 12. And that's it. The answer is 7x over 12. And that's it. We've simplified fully x over 3 plus x over 4. The answer is 7x over 12. And to do that, we just made both fractions have the same denominator, and then we just added them. Okay, question number two. So question number two says, express as a single fraction, w over 2, subtract w plus 1 over 7. So again, if we want to subtract these fractions, we want to have the same denominator. So if denominators of 2 and 7, I'm thinking 14, 14 is a good common denominator to use. So we're going to have something over 14, subtract something over 14. So to get from 2 to 14, we multiply by 7. So we need to multiply the numerator by 7 as well. W times 7 will be 7W. So that's our equivalent fraction. Now, if we have a look at the other fraction, we've got a denominator of 7, but we want a denominator of 14. So we're going to multiply by 2. We're going to double it. So that means we're going to double or multiply everything on the numerator by 2. So if we double W plus 1, we're going to get 2W plus 2. So it's going to be 2W plus 2. Now this is fantastic, we've now got two fractions with the same denominator. So whenever we're subtracting fractions with the same denominator, we just take away the numerators. So let's write this as a single fraction. So let's write it all over 14. And we'd have 7w subtract, so 7w subtract. Now we're going to subtract all of this, so I'm going to put it in a bracket. So I'm going to put it in a bracket and write 2w plus 2. So just writing it in a bracket. Because we're subtracting the 2w and we're also subtracting the 2, the positive 2. Now if we simplify this, what are we going to get? So we've got 7w, take away 2w, well it's going to be 5w, and then we're also taking away 2, so it's going to be subtract 2, and the denominator is 14, and that's it. So if we're asked to simplify w over 2, subtract w plus 1 over 7, the answer would be 5w, subtract 2 over 14. And just to recap that, we found two fractions with the same denominator, we found equivalent fractions with 14 on the denominator, We've done that by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by 7 to get 7w over 14. We multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the second fraction by 2 to get 2w plus 2 over 14. Both fractions have the denominator of 14, so we just took away the numerators. So we've got 7w subtract 2w plus 2. We're subtracting all of that. So we're taking away 2w and we're also subtracting 2. And whenever we do 7, take away 2w, we get 5w. And then we've also got to take away the 2, so it's then subtract 2 over 14. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says, express as a single fraction, v plus three over two plus two v plus one over five. So we wanna add these two fractions together. The denominators at the minute are two and five. So let's get two equivalent fractions, both with 10 on the denominator. So I'm choosing that as a common denominator. So to get from two to 10, we multiply by five. So let's multiply everything on the numerator by five. Five times v would be five v, and five times three would be plus 15. So we've got 5v plus 15 over 10. That's our equivalent fraction. Now our next fraction has a 5 on the denominator, so we need to double that to get to 10. So we need to double everything on the numerator, so that'll be 4v plus 2, just doubling both of those. Now we've got two fractions with 10 on the denominator, so we can just add the numerators together. 5v plus 4v would be 9v, and 15 plus 2 would be plus 17, and then the denominator is 10. So the answer would be 9v plus 17, over 10, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number four. So question number four says, express as a single fraction, w over seven, subtract w plus two over five. 
So here we've got two fractions and they've got different denominators. So let's make them have the same denominator. And I think a good choice of a common denominator here would be 35. So we're going to have something over 35 subtract something over 35. Now to get from 7 to 35, we multiply by 5. So let's multiply the numerator by 5. 5 times w would be 5w. Now we have our next fraction. To get from 5 to 35, we multiply by 7. So we need to multiply everything on the numerator by 7. 7 times w is 7w. And then we've got 2. We're going to times that by 7. So that will be then plus 14. So we multiply both of these by 5 to get 5w over 35. I'll multiply both of these by 7 to get 7w plus 14 over 35. Now this is fantastic. We've now got two fractions with the same denominator. So let's take away the numerators. So 5w take away 7w. So 5w take away 7w would be minus 2w. And then we're also taking away the 14. So it's going to then be minus 14. And the denominator will stay the same. It'll remain 35. So the answer is minus 2w minus 14 over 35. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five, we've been asked to simplify five over x plus seven over six x. Now if we have a look here, the denominators aren't the same. This has got a denominator of x and this has got a denominator of six x. So if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by six, we'd get a six x on the denominator. So let's do that. Let's multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by six. So the second fraction will remain seven over six x. But the first fraction, let's multiply both of these by six. 5 times 6 is 30, and x times 6 would be 6x. So we've got 30 over 6x plus 7 over 6x. And now they've got the same denominator, we can just add them together. 30 plus 7 would be 37 over 6x. And that's it, so our answer is 37 over 6x. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 6. So question number 6 says simplify 3 over 2w plus 5 over 3w. So if we notice here, the denominators aren't the same. We've got 2w and 3w. So I'm thinking a good common denominator would be 6w. We could multiply both of these by 3, and we could multiply both of these by 2. And then that will give us 6w and 6w. So let's multiply both the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by 3. So if we do that, we would get 3 times 3 is 9, and 2w times 3 would be 6w. And then in terms of our second fraction, let's multiply both of these by 2. So doubling 5 would be 10, and doubling 3w would be 6w. Now this is fantastic, we've now got two fractions, both with 6w on the denominator. So then, if we add them together, 9 plus 10 is 19, and then we've got over 6w. So the answer is 19 over 6w, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 7. So question number 7, we've been asked to simplify 2 over 3y, subtract 1 over 5y. So if we notice here, the fractions don't have the same denominator. We've got 3y and 5y, and I'm thinking a good common denominator would be 15y. So let's get something over 15y, subtract something over 15y. So to get from 3y to 15y, we multiply by 5. So let's multiply the numerator by 5. 2 times 5 is 10. And to get from 5y to 15y, we'd multiply by 3. So let's multiply the numerator by 3, so that'll be 3. And then we've got 10 over 15y, subtract 3 over 15y, so then that'll be 7 over 15y and that's our answer 7 over 15y and that's it okay let's have a look at our next question question number eight so question number eight we've been asked to express as a single fraction 1 over x plus 1 plus 4 over x minus 2 so here this time the denominators are x plus 1 and x minus 2 so to get a common denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 2, and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x plus 1. And then they'll both have the same denominator, so we would both have x plus 1 times x minus 2. So let's do that. So in terms of the first fraction, we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 2. And when we do that, 1 times x minus 2 would be x minus 2. That's the numerator. If we multiply 1 by x minus 2, we get x minus 2. Then in terms of the denominator, I'm going to put these in brackets. So I'm going to multiply x plus 1 by x minus 2. So that'll be x plus 1 times x minus 2. Just putting them together in brackets. And that would mean x plus 1 times x minus 2. So I've multiplied both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 2. We've then got our plus sign. And we're now going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x plus 1. So 4 times x plus 1, I'm going to write it as 4 and then brackets x plus 1. And then I can multiply them together in a minute, but I'm just writing them together just 4 times x plus 1 to show that I'm multiplying the numerator by x plus 1. And then in terms of the denominator, I'm going to multiply the x minus 2 by x plus 1. Now I could write x minus 2 and then in brackets x plus 1. But I'm going to write it the other way around, x plus 1 and then in brackets x minus 2. Remember, it doesn't actually matter which way around you multiply them. So I'm going to write x plus 1 brackets x minus 2. 
And that's what we get whenever we multiply x minus 2 by x minus 1. And I've just put the x plus 1 in front of the x minus 2. And now this is fantastic. We've now got two fractions with the same denominator. We've got denominators of x plus 1 times x minus 2 and x plus 1 times x minus 2. Now, just before I add together, I'm actually going to expand these brackets to begin with. So I've got x minus 2 over x plus 1, and then in brackets, x minus 2, and then plus. And then 4 times x would be 4x, and 4 times 1 would be plus 4. Then our fraction line, and then beneath, x plus 1, brackets, x minus 2. Now, we're adding these together, so we just need to add the numerators together. So x plus 4x, well, x plus 4x would be 5x, and then we've got minus 2 plus 4. A minus 2 plus 4 would be 2, so plus 2. And then the denominator would be x plus 1, brackets, x minus 2. And that's it. And that's it. We've just added together these fractions and expressed it as a single fraction. And one thing I would use you to do at this point is just check to see if I could factorize the numerator. And if I could factorize the numerator, perhaps I could cancel down. But in this case, I can't. So that's it. We're finished. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 9. So question number 9 says, express as a single fraction, 3x plus 1 over 4 plus 2x minus 1 over 3. Okay, so if I wanted to add together these fractions, I want to get the same denominator. And the denominators at the minute are 4 and 3, so I'm thinking 12. So it's going to be something over 12 plus something over 12. To get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. So let's multiply everything on the numerator by 3. 3 times 3x would be 9x, and 3 times 1 would be plus 3. So that's our equivalent fraction with 12 on the denominator. Now to get from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4. So let's multiply everything on the numerator by 4. So 4 times 2x is 8x, and then 4 times minus 1 will be minus 4. So that's fantastic. We've now got two fractions with the same denominator. Now we just need to add them together. 9x plus 8x is equal to 17x, and then 3 plus minus 4. Well, if we go 3 and we're adding minus 4, well, adding minus 4 means we're going to go down 4. So 3, if we go down 4, would be minus 1. That's 3 plus minus 4 would be minus 1. And then our denominator would just be 12. And that's it. So our answer would be 17x minus 1 over 12. And just to recap that, we found two fractions with the same denominators. So we found a common denominator of 12. We multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 3, and the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 4. And then we just added together the numerators, and 9x plus 8x is 17x, and 3 plus minus 4 would be minus 1. So that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10, we've been asked to simplify w over 2 multiplied by w over 4. So to multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators and then multiply the denominators. So let's do that. w times w is w squared, and 2 times 4 would be 8. So the answer would be w squared over 8, and that's it. And that can't be cancelled down, so that's it, that's our answer. So we just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Okay, let's have a look at our next one, question number 11. So question number 11 says simplify fully 3a over 2 multiplied by 4 over 5a. So to do this question, there's a couple of different approaches we could use. We could multiply, and then we could cancel down, or it's possible to cancel down and then multiply. And I'm actually going to use both approaches to show that both of them would work in this question. So if we want to multiply to begin with, so let's multiply the numerators together. First of all, so 3a times 4, so 3a times 4 would be 12a. And then in terms of the denominators, 2 times 5a would be 10a. So we've multiplied the numerators together, and we've multiplied the denominators together. Now we've got 12a over 10a. This can be cancelled down. We could divide both the numerator and the denominator by a to begin with. So we could divide both of these by a, and that would give us, if we divide the numerator and the denominator by a, we'd get that's equal to 12 over 10. And now we can divide both of these by 2. Just divide both of those by 2. We give us 6 over 5. So the answer would be 6 fifths, or you could even read it as a mixed number, but I'd probably just leave it as 6 fifths, and that's it. So what we've done there is we've multiplied the numerators together and the denominators together. We've got 12a over 10a, and then we've just cancelled down. We've divided both the numerator and the denominator by a, and then we've divided both the numerator and the denominator by 2, and we've got that's equal to 6 fifths. So that's it. So that's one approach to that question. But another approach would be to cancel down and then to multiply. So let's do that. Let's cancel down and then multiply. Now, because we know we're multiplying the two numerators together, and then we're also multiplying the two denominators together, you can actually cancel down anything on this numerator with that denominator, and anything on that numerator with that denominator. So let's have a look at that. If we've got 3a over 5a, well, you'd be able to divide both of those by a. So you can actually divide that by a and that by a. So you've got a 3 there and a 5 there. And also, you can have a look at this numerator and this denominator, and they're both divisible by 2, so let's cancel down, so let's divide both of them by 2, and that gives us 2 and 1. And now we're left with 3 over 1 multiplied by 2 over 5. And let's do that. 3 times 2 is equal to 6, and 1 times 5 is equal to 5. So the answer would be 6 fifths. So it's possible to cancel down before you multiply. 
and that's it. So you can use either approach there as long as you do it correctly. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12, we've been asked to simplify fully 5a cubed over 6y, multiplied by 4a squared y over 2ay. Now again, in this question, we could multiply and then cancel down, or we could cancel down and then multiply. I'm actually just gonna multiply and then cancel down, so let's do that. Five times four would be equal to two. A cubed times A squared would be A to the power of five, and then we've still got our Y. So just multiply the two numerators together, and I've got 20 A to the power of five Y. Now in terms of the denominators, six Y multiplied by two A Y, well six times two is 12, and then we've just got an A, and then we've got Y times Y is Y squared. So I've multiplied the numerators together and I've multiplied the denominators together. Now let's cancel down. So 20 over 12, well 20 over 12, they're both divisible by four. So if we divide both of those by four, we're gonna get five and then three. So five on the numerator and three on the denominator. Now in terms of the A's, we've got A to the power of five divided by A. Well, it's gonna be A to the power of four, so it's gonna be A to the power of four. And then finally, in terms of our y's, we have a y and a y squared, but that y is going to divide by one of those y's, so we left with a y in the denominator. So that means that our answer would be 5a to the power of 4 over 3y, and that's it. So in this question, we've multiplied the numerators together, we've multiplied the denominators together, we've then cancelled down the numbers by seeing they're both divisible by 4, and then we've done a to the power of 5 divided by a, so we've cancelled one of those a's with that a, so we've got a to the power of 4 in the numerator, and then we had y over y squared, but that y cancelled with one of those y's, so we're left with a y in the denominator. So then that's our answer. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. Now, I'm actually going to show you how to do this question in a couple of different approaches. So we've got simplify fully c minus 2 over 4 multiplied by 12 over 2c minus 4. Now, in terms of this question, one approach is just to multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. So if we multiply the numerators together, well, c minus 2 multiplied by 12, that'll be 12, and then in brackets, c minus 2. Just putting them beside each other, we can expand them in a minute. And then, in terms of our denominator here, we've got 4 multiplied by 2c minus 4. So that'll be 4, and then in brackets, 2c minus 4. So just multiply the numerators together and multiply the denominators together. And I've just put them beside each other. Now let's expand our brackets and see what we get. 12 times c would be 12c and 12 times minus 2 would be minus 24. So we've expanded the bracket on the numerator, now let's expand the bracket on the denominator. 4 times 2c, well 4 times 2c is 8c, and then we've got 4 multiplied by minus 4, and 4 times minus 4 is minus 16. So we've got 12c subtract 24 over 8c subtract 16. So that's fantastic. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm now going to factorise this. So I'm going to factorise both the numerator and the denominator and see what I get. So if I factorise the numerator, I can see both of these are divisible by 12. So we would write 12 and then in brackets, c subtract 2. So that's what we get if we factorise the numerator. We could take 12 out and if we take 12 out, we'd be left with c minus 2. And then in terms of the denominator, I can see that I can divide both of those by 8. So I'm going to take an 8 out and then in brackets, if I divide both of those by 8, I'll be left with c subtract 2. So c subtract 2. Now this is fantastic, we've now got 12 multiplied by c minus 2 over 8 multiplied by c minus 2. So we can divide the numerator and the denominator by c minus 2, so we'll be left with 12 over 8, and they're both divisible by 4, so if I divide both of those by 4, we'll get 3 over 2. So that's fantastic, we had this quite complicated algebra, and we've cancelled it down to be 3 halves, and that's it. So that's one approach. Now in this question, what I've done was I've just multiplied the numerators and the denominators together. I've then expanded the brackets and then I factorized it and canceled down. So that's one approach. Another approach would actually be to cancel down to begin with. So to look at this numerator and this denominator and see if we can cancel anything down. And likewise, this numerator and this denominator. Now if we have a look at this denominator here, 2c minus 4, this can be factorized. So I'm actually going to write it as 2 and then in brackets, c minus 2. Just taking a 2 out, so factorizing this denominator here. Now I'm going to look at this numerator and this denominator. We've got c minus 2 and c minus 2. So both this numerator and this denominator are divisible by c minus 2. So let's divide them both by c minus 2. So c minus 2 divided by c minus 2, that would just be 1. And c minus 2 divided by c minus 2 would be 1 there, it would just cancel out. So we've got a 1 there and a 2 there. Now, in terms of this numerator and this denominator, they're both divisible by 4. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that's fantastic, we've now got 1 over 1 multiplied by 3 over 2, and 1 times 3 is equal to 3, and 1 times 2 is equal to 2, and that's it, 3 halves. So that approach you may notice is slightly easier, uh, maybe to cancel down and then to multiply, um, and it's just checking to see if you can factorise anything and see if anything cancels down. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 says, simplify fully w over 2 divided by w over 6. So remember when we're dividing fractions, what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. So what we're going to do is we're going to write w over 2, and instead of divide, we're going to write multiply, and then we're going to find the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by, which would be 6 over w. So 6 over w. Remember, just flipping over that fraction. Now we can just multiply w times 6 would be 6w, and then on the denominator, 2 times w, 2 times w is 2w. And now we can just cancel this down. So we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by w, and then we've got 6 over 2, so that's 6 over 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3, so the answer would just be 3. So w over 2 divided by w over 6 would be 3, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 15. So question number 15 says, simplify fully v plus 3 over 2 divided by 3v plus 9 over 5. So in this question, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. So we're going to write v plus 3 over 2 multiplied by, and then the reciprocal of this fraction would be 5 over 3v plus 9. Now at this stage, we could multiply and then cancel down. I'm actually going to cancel down to begin with because I can see that this denominator can be factorized. So let's factorize this denominator and see what we get. So the first fraction will still be v plus 3 over 2. And then we're going to multiply by 5 over. And then if we factorize this denominator, they're both divisible by 3. So it'd be 3 and then in brackets, v plus 3. So v plus 3, close brackets. So we've now got v plus 3 over 2 multiplied by 5 over 3 brackets v plus 3. Now at this stage we could again multiply and then cancel down, but actually I can see that this numerator and this denominator, we can cancel them both down. We can divide them both by v plus 3. So if we divide this by v plus 3, we just get 1, and then here we could just divide by v plus 3 and we'd be left with 3. And now we could just multiply. 1 times 5 is equal to 5, and then 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So that means our answer would be 5 over 6, or 5 6, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 16. So this time we've got v plus 3 over 15 divided by v squared plus 3v over 25. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. So we've got v plus 3 over 15 multiplied by 25 over v squared plus 3v. Now at this stage, we could again multiply it and then cancel down, but I can see that this denominator can be factorized here. So let's factorize this denominator. So we're gonna get v plus three over 15 multiplied by 25 over, and then factorizing this, they're both divisible by v, so let's take our v out, and then that would leave us with v squared, take out a v, would leave us with a v, and then plus, and then we have three v, we've taken out the v, so we're left with three. Now that's fantastic, we can see that this numerator can be divided by v plus 3, and so can this denominator, so they can be cancelled down. And actually this numerator and this denominator are both divisible by 5. So let's do that. So if we divide both this numerator and this denominator by v plus 3, we would get on the numerator here, we'd just be left with 1. And then this denominator, we would just be left with v. So we've divided both of these by v plus 3. Now let's divide both this numerator and this denominator by 5. So 15 divided by 5 would be 3, and 25 divided by 5 would be 5. And now we can just multiply. 1 times 5 is equal to 5, and 3 times v would be equal to 3v. So the answer is 5 over 3v, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 17. So question number 17 says simplify x squared plus 8x over x squared plus 10x plus 16. Now in terms of this numerator, we can factorize this and the denominator as well. So let's factorize both of them and then see if we can cancel down. So in terms of this numerator, we can factorize the numerator x and then a bracket. And then dividing both of these by x would leave us with x plus 8, close brackets. So that's factorizing the numerator. Now let's factorize the denominator here. So we've got x squared plus 10x plus 16. So let's factorize that. So bracket, 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 bracket. We put an x at the front of both brackets. And we want to look for two numbers that will multiply together to be 16 and add together to be 10. So I'm thinking plus 8 and plus 2. So we've got x plus 8, x plus 2. And let's just check that. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. And 8 times x is 8x. And if we add them together, it's 10x. And 8 times 2 is equal to 16. So we factorize the numerator and we factorize the denominator. And both of them are divisible by x plus 8. We can divide both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 8. And if we do that, we get, if we divide both of them by x plus 8, we'll just be left with x over x plus 2. And that's it. So we've simplified this and we've done it by factorizing the numerator and then the denominator. And then we've looked to see, are they both divisible by anything? And they're both divisible by x plus 8. So we've divided both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 8. And that's left us with x over x plus 2. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 18. So question number 18 says simplify 2, and then in brackets, x plus 7, close brackets to the power of 4, over x plus 7, all cubed. 
So in terms of this question, I would actually do this in quite a quick and simple way, and I'll show you that at the end. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to write it out in full. So in terms of the numerator, that is 2. Then it's x plus 7 to the power of 4, and that means x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. So let's write that out. x plus 7, x plus 7, x plus 7, and then x plus 7. So that's the numerator. We've got two brackets, x plus 7 to the power of 4. And what that means is 2 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. And then in terms of the denominator, we've got x plus 7 cubed. So that's x plus 7 multiplied by x plus 7 multiplied by x plus 7, because it's x plus 7 cubed. We can now divide the numerator and the denominator by x plus 7. We can divide it by x plus 7 again. And we could divide it by x plus 7 again. And then I'll just put a 1 in the denominator there. And as you can see on the numerator, we've got 2 and then in brackets x plus 7. So 2 brackets x plus 7. And then on the denominator, we've got 1. And if we divide something by 1, we just get whatever there is on the numerator. So I'm actually just going to write 2 brackets x plus 7. And then we can expand this if we wanted to. If we expanded this, we would get 2x plus 14. And that's it. And actually, you could leave it as 2 brackets x plus 7, or you could write 2x plus 14. So that's our answer, 2x plus 14. Or you could write it as 2 brackets x plus 7. And that's it. So just to recap, on the numerator, we had 2 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. On the denominator, we have x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. And then we divide both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 7 x plus 7 and x plus 7 and we'll be left with 2 times x plus 7 on the numerator and the denominator we'll just be left with 1 when we divide by 1 we just get what's on the numerator so we've just got 2 brackets x plus 7 and we've expanded our brackets so that's how you do it in full however if I was given this on a test paper if I was asked to simplify this what I would do is I would just look at it and see well we've got x plus 7 to the power of 4 that means x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7 and the denominator we've got x plus 7 cubed that's x plus 7 times x plus 7 times x plus 7. So I would divide both the numerator and the denominator by x plus 7 cubed. So we divide the denominator by x plus 7 cubed. So just leave me with a 1 on the denominator. And then on the numerator, I would divide this by x plus 7 cubed. So that would just leave us with an x plus 7. So I could just get rid of the power there. So I'd be left with 2 brackets x plus 7 on the numerator. And on the denominator, I'd just be left with 1. So again, our answer would be 2 brackets x plus 7. And again, we can multiply that out to get 2x plus 14. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 19. So question number 19 says simplify x squared minus 3x plus 2 over x squared plus 5x minus 6. So let's factorise the numerator and factorise the denominator and then see if we can cancel down. So in terms of the numerator, if we factorise that, so it's a quadratic and it's x squared, so we're just going to put two brackets and we're going to write an x at the front of both of them. And then we're looking for two numbers that are multiplied together to be 2 and add together to be minus 3. Now because they've multiplied together to be a positive and add together to be a negative, they're both going to be negative. And I'm thinking 2 and 1 because minus 2 times minus 1 is 2 and minus 2 plus minus 1 will be minus 3. So that's the numerator factorised. And in terms of the denominator, let's factorise that as well. So it's x squared, so let's put an x and an x. We want two numbers that multiply together to be negative 6 and we'll add together to be 5. So I'm thinking we'd have plus 6 and minus 1. And let's just check that. x times x is x squared. x times minus 1 would be minus x. And 6 times x would be 6x. And if we add them together, we get 5x. And then 6 times minus 1 would be minus 6. So that's fantastic. Now, if we have a look here, we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by x minus 1. So that would leave us with x minus 2 over x plus 6. So that's our answer, x minus 2 over x plus 6. And that's it. OK, question number 20. OK, question number 20. So question number 20, we've been asked to simplify x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 7x plus 10. This is fantastic. We can factorise both of these and then we can see if we can cancel down. And if we have a look here at the numerator, we've got x squared minus 4. So that's the difference between two squares. So we're going to have bracket, 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 bracket. We've got x squared and 4. They're both square numbers. So that's going to be x and x. And we're going to square root this to get 2 and 2. And we're going to put 1 with a plus sign and 1 with a minus sign. So remember how to factorise whenever we've got the difference between two squares. We square root them both and then we put one bracket with a plus sign and one bracket with a minus sign. Now, in terms of the denominator, let's factorise that and see what we get. And hopefully one of these two brackets will be on the denominator as well, and then we can cancel down. So we've got x squared minus 7x plus 10. So we're going to put x and x, 
Now we want two numbers that are multiplied together to be 10 and add together to be negative 7. Now because they're times together to be a positive and adding together to be a negative, it means they're both going to be negative. Now actually, we want to cancel this down. So what I'm really looking for is for a bracket to be on the numerator and a bracket to be on the denominator. Now because we've got x minus 2 here, I think one of the brackets may be x minus 2. So let's think about it. We want two numbers that are times together to be 10. So we had minus 2 and minus 5. Let's just check that x times x is x squared, fantastic. x times minus 5 is minus 5x, and minus 2 times x would be minus 2x, and if we add them together, that's minus 7x, and minus 2 times minus 5 is 10. That's fantastic. So actually, you can use, if you factorize the numerator, you can maybe use that as a bit of a hint to how to factorize the denominator, and that just might help you do it a bit more quickly. Okay, now we can actually see here that both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by x minus 2. We can divide both the numerator by x minus 2 and the denominator by x minus 2. So that'll leave us an answer of x plus 2 over x minus 5. And that's it. We've simplified that algebraic fraction. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, our next question says to simplify fully 4x squared minus 25 over 6x squared minus 11x minus 10. So we're going to factorize the numerator using the difference between two squares. And we're going to factorize the denominator. And it's a slightly harder quadratic to factorize. So again, you could use inspection or you could use a split in the middle technique if you want to. Um, so let's have a look at this. So in terms of the numerator, let's factorize this. So bracket, 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 bracket. Let's square root them both. So that's going to be 2x and 5 and 2x and and 5, and we're going to put one bracket with a plus sign and one with a minus. Now in terms of the denominator, we want to factorize this, so factorize it like so. Now again, we're going to use what we've got on the numerator to try and give us a bit of a hint to what might go on the denominator. So hopefully one of these two brackets will be down here as well. So we've got 6x squared. Now because both brackets have got 2x and 2x, rather than writing 6x and x, I'm going to try a 2x and a 3x. So let's write 2x and let's write 3x because 2x times 3x is 6x squared. Okay, so we've now hopefully got what goes at the front of both of the brackets. Now let's have a look at what goes at the end of the brackets. So we've got minus 10. So whenever we expand these brackets, we want to get negative 10. So we're looking for two numbers that will multiply together to be negative 10. Now if we have a look here, we've got 5 and we've got minus 5. So let's try a 5 and a 2. And obviously it's going to be negative 10, so perhaps that might be a 5 and a negative 2, or a negative 5 and 2, and so on. And we want to get, when we expand our brackets, we want to get negative 11x. So I'm thinking that if we put the 5 here, we're going to have 3x times 5, which is 15. So let's make that negative. So it's 3x times minus 5, which would be negative 15x. And then if we put a plus 2 in this bracket, so let's see if that works. So 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 2 is equal to 4x, and 3x times 5 is equal to negative 15x, and 4x plus negative 15x would be negative 11x, that's fantastic. And then minus 5 times 2 is equal to negative 10, and that's it. So we've factorized the denominator. Now you could have used the split in the middle technique to factorize that if you wanted to, but it's up to you as long as you factorize it correctly. Now if we have a look here in terms of the numerator and the denominator, they're both divisible by 2x minus 5. So let's divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2x minus 5. And then that would leave us with 2x plus 5 over 3x plus 2. And that's it. We've simplified fully. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 22. So question number 22, we've been asked to write as a single fraction in its simplest form, w over w plus 3, subtract 5 over w brackets w plus 3. So we want to subtract these fractions, so it'd be fantastic if we had the same denominator, a common denominator. So if we have a look here, we've got w plus 3, we've got w plus 3, but this one's w times w plus 3. So if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by w, we would have on the denominator w times w plus 3. So let's multiply both the numerator and the denominator here by w. So that would give us, if we multiply the numerator by w, we would get w squared. And then if we multiply the denominator by w, we would get w brackets w plus 3. So as you can see, we've got that on the denominator there, and then we've got subtract, and then this fraction we're just leaving as it is, so 5 over w brackets w plus 3. So that's fantastic. We've now got two fractions with the same denominator. Now we can just subtract the numerator, so we're going to get on the numerator, so w squared subtract 5, and then on the denominator we'll just be left with w brackets w plus 3. And that's it, so we've subtracted those algebraic fractions. So just to recap, these two fractions didn't have the same denominator, so we've multiplied both the numerator and the denominator of the first fraction by w, to give us w squared over w brackets w plus 3, and then we just subtracted the numerators and wrote it as w squared subtract 5 over w brackets w plus 3, and that's it. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 23. So question number 23 says, write an expression for the area of the rectangle. So we want to find the area for this rectangle. And to find the area of the rectangle, we do the length multiplied by the width. So we're going to do the length times the width. So let's do that. So we've got the length, which is w plus 3 over 2. And we're going to multiply that by w subtract 1 over 3. So let's multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Now, in terms of the numerators, we're going to do w plus 3 multiplied by w minus 1. So that's w plus 3 multiplied by w minus 1. And then on the denominator, we've got 2 times 3. And 2 times 3 is 6. And that's it. So we could leave our answer like that. And actually, I probably would leave my answer like that as w plus 3 in brackets and then w minus 1 over 6. So that could be the answer. Alternatively, you could expand this and expand it and see what you get. So if we were to expand this, we would get w times w is w squared. w times minus 1 is minus w, and w times 3 is 3w. If you add them together, that'll be plus 2w. And then 3 times minus 1 is minus 3 over 6. So you could write it as either this form or this form. And so the answer is either that, or you could write it as w squared plus 2w subtract 3 over 6. So either one of these two would be perfectly fine. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So in question number 24, we've been given some information that x equals this, y equals this, and z equals this. And we've been asked to find an expression for x squared. So that's x multiplied by x. So x is c over 3. So we're going to do c over 3 multiplied by itself. So c over 3 multiplied by c over 3. And let's see what we get. So c times c is c squared. And 3 times 3 is 9. So that would be c squared over 9. And that's it. Okay, next, part b. Part B says x plus y, so that's x plus y. So that's c over 3 plus ac over 4. So let's write that down. So we want to add together these two algebraic fractions. So we want to get the same denominator, a common denominator. And with 3 and 4, I'm thinking 12. So 12 and 12 and a plus sign. To get from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4. So let's multiply the numerator by 4. So that's going to be 4c. And then here, to get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. So let's multiply the numerator by 3. ac times 3 would be 3ac. And now we can just add these together. So we can just add the numerators together. Now 4c plus 3ac would just be 4c plus 3ac. And the denominator would just be 12. And then that would give us 4c plus 3ac over 12. Now at this point, I'm actually going to factorize the numerator. The both of these are divisible by c, so it'll give us c, and then in brackets, 4 plus 3a, close brackets, over 12. And that's it. So x plus y would be c brackets 4 plus 3a over 12. Okay, and then part c. Part c says to work out x, y over z. So we're going to do x times y, and then divide it by z. So let's work out x, y to begin with. So we're going to do x times y. So to find x, y, we're going to times those together. So let's do that. So let's multiply x and y together. So c multiplied by ac would be ac squared. And then on the denominator, 3 times 4 would be 12. So that's what we get when we multiply x and y together. It would be ac squared over 12. Now we need to divide that by whatever z is. So we're going to take this xy, so ac squared over 12. And we're going to divide that by whatever z is. So if we go up, z is a squared over 2c plus 1. So a squared over 2c plus 1. So we now want to work this out. So we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. So that'll give us ac squared over 12 multiplied by 2c plus 1 over a squared. Okay, so we're now going to work this out. And actually, just before we multiply, I'm going to look to see if I can cancel anything out. I notice here there's an a on this numerator and an a squared in this denominator. So let's divide this numerator by a and this denominator by a. So that a would cancel out. And this is a squared. That's a times a. So if we divide it by a, we would just be left with a. So we'd get rid of that squared there. So we've divided both this numerator and denominator by a. Now let's just multiply. c squared multiplied by 2c plus 1. So let's write that out. c squared brackets 2c plus 1, close brackets. And then on the denominator, we've got 12 times a. And 12 times a is just 12a. And that's it. So we could leave our answer as that. We could leave it as c squared brackets 2c plus 1 over 12a. Or alternatively, you could expand the brackets if you wanted to, and you could get 2c cubed plus c squared over 12a. I probably would leave it as the top one, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 25. So question number 25 says, the length of a base of a triangle and its perpendicular height are, the base is x plus 5 over 10 centimetres, and the height is x minus 1 over 4 centimetres. And we've been asked to find the expression for the area of a triangle. So remember the area of a triangle is half the base multiplied by its height or perpendicular height. So we need to do the base times the height and then divide by 2. 
So let's do that. So let's do the base times height first of all. So we're going to take the base, which is x plus 5 over 10. We're going to take the height, which is x minus 1 over 4. And we're going to multiply them together. So to multiply these together, we're going to multiply the numerators. So that'll be x plus 5 in brackets and then x minus 1 in brackets. And then on the denominator, we just multiply the two denominators together. 10 times 4 is 40. And that's it. So that's what we get when we do the base times the height. Now we remember we need to divide by 2. So we need to divide by 2. So we're going to take this x plus 5 brackets x minus 1 close brackets over 40. And then we now need to divide by 2. And dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So we're going to multiply by a half because remember 2 is 2 over 1. When we flip that over we get that's equal to a half. So we're going to do a half times it. So it's going to be x plus 5 brackets x minus 1 close brackets over 40 multiplied by a half because that's 2 over 1 so we're multiplying by its reciprocal and then if we multiply the numerators together we would just be left with x plus 5 brackets x minus 1 close brackets and then the denominator 40 times 2 is equal to 80 and that's it so the answer would be x plus 5 brackets x minus 1 over 80 and you could expand the numerator if you wanted to I'd probably just leave it like that and that's it Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 26. So question number 26, we've been asked to simplify y squared minus 6y over 8 multiplied by 12 over y squared minus 4y minus 12. Okay, so whenever we multiply these fractions, we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator together. Now we could multiply them together first of all, and then cancel down. I'm actually going to cancel down to begin with, and then I'm going to multiply. So actually what I've noticed is here, this numerator can be factorized and this denominator can be factorized. So let's factorize those to begin with. So this numerator factorized would be y, and then in brackets, y subtract 6, close brackets, over 8. And then we've got our multiply, and then we've got 12 over, and let's factorize this denominator. So we've got bracket, 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 and we've got y and y. We want two numbers that multiply together to be negative 12, and whenever we add them together, we get that's equal to negative 4. So I'm thinking minus 6 and 2, minus 6 and plus 2. And let's just check that. y times y is y squared y times 2 is 2y, and y times minus 6 is minus 6y. When you simplify that, that'll be minus 4y, and minus 6 times 2 is minus 12. So that's fantastic. So we've factorized the numerator here, and we've factorized the denominator here. So let's see if we can cancel down before we multiply. So let's do that. I'm actually going to change color of ink here. So I'm going to divide this numerator and this denominator by y minus 6. So that would leave us with a y here in this numerator and a y plus 2 in this denominator. And now we've got 12 and 8. They're both divisible by 4. So let's divide both of these by 4. So if we divide 8 by 4, we get 2. And if we divide 12 by 4, we get 3. So that's fantastic. So we've cancelled down. Now we can just multiply together. y times 3 would be 3y. And then on the denominator, we've got 2 multiplied by y plus 2. So 2 brackets y plus 2. Close brackets. And that's it. So you could leave your answer like that if you wanted to. And that's how I'd probably leave it is 3y over 2 brackets y plus 2. Or you could expand the denominator here to get 3y over 2y plus 4. Either one of those would be fine. I probably would just leave it like that. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 27. So question number 27, we've been asked to simplify fully x squared minus x over 9 multiplied by 3 over x squared minus 8x plus 7. So what we're going to do here is we're going to factorize this numerator, we're going to factorize this denominator, and then we're going to see if we can cancel down, and then we'll multiply. So let's factorize this numerator. So we'd have x, and then in brackets, x minus 1. Because we had x squared minus x, they're both divisible by x, so we've taken the x out, and then we've got x minus 1 inside the brackets, over 9. Multiply by 3 over, and then let's factorize this denominator here. So bracket, 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 x squared, so x and x. We want to find two numbers that are multiplied together to be 7 and that will add together to be minus 8. So I'm thinking minus 1 and minus 7. So that's fantastic. We'll factorize this numerator here and we we'll factorize this denominator here. Now let's see if we can cancel down. So I'm just going to change color back here just to help us keep track of where we're at. So we can divide both this numerator and this denominator by x minus 1. So then that would leave us with an x here and an x minus 7 there. And then in terms of this numerator and this denominator, they're both divisible by 3. So let's divide both of those by 3. So 9 divided by 3 is 3 and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So we've cancelled down these fractions, now let's multiply them together. x times 1 will be x, and then on the denominator we would have 3 times x minus 7, so that would be 3 brackets x minus 7, close brackets. And that's it, so we've got x over 3 brackets x minus 7, and that's it. So you could leave it like that, or if you wanted to, you could expand the denominator and write it as x over 3x minus 21. I probably would leave it like that, but it's up to you, and that's it.
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 28. So question number 28, we've got simplify fully 1 over 3w squared plus 5w subtract 12 divided by 1 over 2w squared plus w minus 15. So remember here we've got two fractions we're dividing, so let's multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction we're dividing by. So that'll be 1 over 3w squared plus 5w subtract 12 multiplied by, and then it would have 2w squared plus w minus 15 over 1 because we find the reciprocal of this. Now at this point here we could multiply together and then we could try and simplify or I'm going to try and factorize the numerator here and this denominator here and then see if we can cancel down and then multiply. So let's do that. So we'd have 1 over and then if we factorize this we would get 3w and then a w and then inside the brackets we're looking for two numbers that will multiply together to be minus 12 and whenever we put them inside the brackets and expand we get 5w. So I'm thinking 4 and 3, and I'm thinking if we put a 3 there, 3w times 3 would be 9w, so plus, and then if we put a minus 4 there, let's just see if that works. 3w times w would be 3w squared, 3w times 3 would be 9w, then we've got minus 4 times w, which is minus 4w, and whenever we simplify that we get the 5w, and then minus 4 times 3 is minus 12. So that's fantastic, we've factorised that denominator. Now let's factorise this numerator here, so that'll be 2w, and then in brackets, W. Okay, so we found what's at the front of the brackets. Now we want to figure out what goes here and here. Now, in terms of this, I'm going to use this as a bit of a hint here. We've got here 3w minus 4. Well, it's not going to be either of these brackets. And we've got w plus 3. I wonder if this is w plus 3. So we want to find two numbers at times to give it to be minus 15. So we've got minus 5 there. Let's see if that works. 2w times w is 2w squared. 2w times 3 is 6w. And w times minus 5 is minus 5w. We can simplify that. You get 1w or plus w. And then minus 5 times 3 is minus 15. So that's fantastic. And now we've got that over 1. Now let's see if we can cancel down before we multiply. So in terms of the numerator here and the denominator here, they're both divisible by w plus 3. So let's divide them both by w plus 3. And then let's multiply together. 1 multiplied by 2w minus 5 would just be 2w minus 5. And then on the denominator we have 3w minus 4. We've got times 1 so it's going to be 3w minus 4. And that's it. So that's our answer. Okay, let's have a look at question number 29. So question number 29 says simplify fully 3 over x plus 2 plus 5 minus 3x over 4 plus x. So we're adding together these algebraic fractions, well, algebraic fractions and x, and what we're going to want to do is get a common denominator for them. So let's have a look at them. So we've got 3 over x plus 2, and then plus 5 minus 3x over 4, and then plus, and I'm going to write it as x over 1. So in terms of a common denominator, I'm thinking 4 bracket x plus 2. So we multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 4, the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2, and then the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2 and 4. So let's do that. So let's multiply both of these by 4. So that'll give us, multiplying the numerator by 4 would be 12, and multiplying the denominator by 4 would be 4 bracket x plus 2. You could write it as 4x plus 8, but I'm just going to leave it as 4 bracket x plus 2. And then plus, and now we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2. So I'm going to put this in a bracket, so 5 minus 3x, close brackets, and then brackets x plus 2, and then over, and then we've got 4 multiplied by x plus 2, so 4 bracket x plus 2. So that's multiplying both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 2. And then we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 4 and x plus 2. So in terms of the numerator, if we multiply by 4 to begin with, that'll be 4x, and then we're going to multiply by x plus 2, so brackets x plus 2, close brackets, and then the denominator is 1, and we're going to multiply by 4 and x plus 2, so that's going to be 4 bracket x plus 2, just like the others. And now this is fantastic, we've now got three fractions with the same denominators. Now what I'm actually going to do is here, I've noticed this fraction in the middle, we can expand these brackets, and same with this fraction on the end, so let's do that. So our first fraction is going to be 12, and then 4. 4 bracket x plus 2, close brackets, and then plus. And now let's expand these brackets. We've got 5 times x, that's 5x. And then 5 times 2, that's going to be plus 10. Minus 3x times x would be minus 3x squared. And then finally, minus 3x times 2 would be minus 6x. So that's what we get when we expand these brackets, and we'll simplify that in a moment if we can. And then the denominator will be 4 bracket x plus 2, close brackets, and then plus. And then finally expanding the numerator here, 4x times x would be 4x squared, and 4x times 2 would be plus 8x. And, that, and that's over 4 bracket x plus 2. 
plus brackets. And actually, let's just simplify this one. So it would be 12 over 4 bracket x plus 2. And now let's simplify the numerator of this fraction. 5x take away 6x would be minus x, so minus x. And then we've got our plus 10. And then we've got our minus 3x squared, so minus 3x squared. And then that's all over 4 bracket x plus 2. Okay, so we've now got three algebraic fractions with the same denominators. We can just add together the numerators. So we've got 12, and then we're going to plus minus x, so that's going to be minus x. And then we're adding 10. And then we've got minus 3x squared plus 4x squared. And then we've got plus 8x. And that's all over 4 bracket x plus 2. And now we can simplify this numerator. Let's deal with the numbers to begin with. We've got 12 plus 10, so it's gonna be 22. And then we've got minus x plus 8x, so that's gonna be plus 7x. And then we've got minus 3x squared plus 4x squared, that's gonna be plus x squared. And that's all over four bracket x plus two. Okay, now we've got this, and I'm just gonna change the order of the numerator here. So we've got x squared plus 7x plus 22 all over four bracket x plus two. And now if we just look at this, we've got x squared plus seven x plus 22. Looking at this numerator, I don't think we can factorize it, so that's us finished. We could expand the denominator if we wanted to, so we could write x squared plus seven x plus 22 over four x plus eight if we wanted to, but actually this is fine as it is, so that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 30. So question number 30, we've been asked to write x squared plus 4x, close brackets, multiplied by x squared plus 2x minus 24 over x squared minus 16 as a single fraction and a simplifier answer. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So let's write it out. We've got x squared plus 4x, and we're going to multiply that by something. So I'm just going to put it over 1 for the moment. So we've got a numerator and a denominator. Multiply by, and then we've got x squared plus 2x minus 24 over x squared minus 16. And I'm actually just going to factorize these. So I'm going to factorize the numerator and I'm going to factorize the denominator. The denominator is quite nice. It's the difference between two squared. So that's going to be x minus 4, and then in brackets x plus 4, because obviously these are both square numbers and we've got that minus sign. So it's the difference between two squared. And then in terms of the numerator, let's factorize the numerator here. We're going to have an x and an x. We want two numbers that multiply together to be minus 24 and add together to be 2. So I'm thinking plus 6 and minus 4. Okay, now let's actually have a look at this numerator. That can be factorized as well. So that'll be x bracket x plus 4, close brackets, over 1. Just taking the x out there. Multiply by, and then we've still got x plus 6 bracket x minus 4, close brackets, over x minus 4, bracket x plus 4. Now at this point, we could cancel down and then multiply. I'm actually just going to multiply to begin with, so I'm just going to multiply all of this. So I'm just going to put them all beside each other. So we'd have x bracket x plus 4, close brackets, x plus 6, close brackets, x minus 4 on the numerator, just putting those all beside each other. And then on the denominator, we would just have 1 times this, which would just be this. So it's going to be x minus 4, brackets, x plus 4. So just multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators just by putting them all beside each other. We could have cancelled down to begin with, but I'm just going to cancel down now. Now let's have a look here. We can divide the numerator and the denominator by x minus 4 to begin with. We can also divide by x plus 4. So that would just leave us with x bracket x plus 6. And we could expand if we wanted to to get x squared plus 6x. I probably would just leave it as x bracket x plus 6. And that's it. I'd actually probably just leave my answer as x bracket x plus 6. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 31. So we've got 4 plus 2x minus 1 over x minus 1. Subtract x plus 2 over x plus 1. Can be written in the form ax squared plus b over x squared minus 1. And we've been asked to find the values of a and b. Okay, so let's work this out. So we've got 4, that's 4 over 1, plus, and then we've got 2x minus 1 over x minus 1, minus x plus 2 over x plus 1. So we want to get a common denominator here. So we've got 1, x minus 1, and x plus 1. So I'm thinking if we have x minus 1, x plus 1, that'll be a good common denominator. So let's find three algebraic fractions with a denominator of x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay, so to do that, we'd multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 1 and x plus 1. We'd multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x plus 1. And we'd multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 1. So let's do that. So let's multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by x minus 1 and x plus 1. So on the numerator, we would just get 4 brackets x minus 1, x plus 1. And then on the denominator, multiply 1 by x minus 1 and x plus 1 will be x minus 1 x plus 1. 
So that's what we get when we multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x minus 1 and x plus 1. We're now going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 1. So that'll be plus, we've got a plus sign. And then we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by x plus 1. So let's write it in brackets. So 2x minus 1, and then in brackets x plus 1. And then we'd have on the denominator x minus 1, and then brackets x plus 1. So we multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x plus 1. Now we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x minus 1. So we've got a minus, and then we've got x plus 2, close brackets, and then we're going to multiply it by x minus 1, so it's going to be brackets x minus 1. And then we've got x plus 1 on the denominator, and we're multiplying it by x minus 1, so x minus 1. And actually, just looking at this, actually, we've got them written the other way around for the other two fractions, so let's just swap these two around. It doesn't actually matter which way we write those, so let's just swap those around. So let's write it as minus 1 and then plus 1. Okay, so we've now got three algebraic fractions with the same denominators. Now let's see what we're trying to do. We're trying to get them in the form of ax squared plus b over x squared minus 1. Now if we have a look at these denominators, if you expand these brackets, x minus 1 and x plus 1, you will get x squared minus 1, because x times x is x squared, x times 1 is x, and minus 1 times x is minus x, and if you add them together you get 0, and then minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. So that whenever you expand these brackets, you will just get x squared minus 1 on the denominators. So I'm going to expand those, and then I'm actually going to expand the numerators as well, so that when we add these algebraic fractions together, we can see what we're simplifying. So let's do that. Okay, so let's start off with this algebraic fraction here. So the denominator will be x squared minus 1. We know that already. And then here we've got 4 multiplied by x minus 1 and x plus 1. Well, actually, this is the same as this. So it's going to be 4 brackets x squared minus 1. If you were to expand these brackets, you get x squared minus 1. And actually, if you expand again, you will get 4x squared minus 4 over x squared minus 1. Okay, so we've expanded those brackets on the first algebraic fraction to get this. Now, let's have a look at our next one, so plus. And then, again, we've got on the denominator x squared minus 1. And then if we expand these, we'll get 2x times x is 2x squared, so 2x squared. 2x times 1 will be plus 2x. Minus 1 times x will be minus x. And then minus 1 times 1 is minus 1. And then if we simplify that numerator, 2x squared will be 2x squared. And then we've got 2x minus x, that's going to be plus x, which is 1x, and then minus 1. And that's all over x squared minus 1. Okay, and then finally, we've got subtract, so we've got subtract there. And then we know that the denominator is going to be x squared minus 1, so it's going to be over x squared minus 1. Let's expand this, so x times x is x squared. x times minus 1 will be minus x. 2 times x would be plus 2x, and 2 times minus 1 would be minus 2. And simplifying this would give us x squared. And minus x plus 2x would be plus x, and then we've got our minus 2. Okay, so we've now got three algebraic fractions with the same denominators. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the first two to begin with. So let's add these first two and see what we get. So if we add these first two, so we've got 4x squared plus 2x squared. That's going to be 6x squared. We've then got, if we have a look at our x's, we've just got this plus x, so it's going to be plus x. And then we've got minus 4 plus minus 1. Well, minus 4 plus minus 1 will be minus 5. So adding together these first two algebraic fractions will give us this, and we've still got minus x squared plus x minus 2 over x squared minus 1. And now finally, we just need to subtract here. So we've got 6x squared take away x squared. That's going to be 5x squared. We've got x take away x. Well, x take away x will be 0. And then we've got minus 5 take away minus 2. So minus 5 minus minus 2 means we're going to go back up 2, so it's going to be minus 3. And then that's over x squared minus 1. Now the question said to find the values of a and b. So let's have a look here. It's fantastic, it's in the right form. So a is going to be equal to 5. So a is equal to 5. And b, b is equal to minus 3. b is equal to minus 3. And that's it. Okay, and let's have a look at our last question, question number 32. So question number 32 says to simplify fully 8x squared minus 2 over 6x squared minus 29x plus 9 multiplied by, and then in brackets, 1 over 2x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2. Okay, so remember our order of operations. We've got to do our brackets first. We need to work out this addition first of all. So let's do that. So let's work out 1 over 2x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 2. So if I want to add together these two algebraic fractions, I want the same denominator. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by x minus 2, and I'm going to multiply both the numerator and denominator of this fraction by 2x plus 1. So whenever I do that, if I multiply both of these by x minus 2, I'm going to get on the numerator would just be x minus 2, and then on the denominator would be 2x plus 1, 
and then in brackets x minus 2. So just multiply both the numerator and the denominator here by x minus 2. And then we've got plus, and then we're going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 2x plus 1. So 1 times 2x plus 1 will be 2x plus 1. And then on the denominator, we've got x minus 2, and we're going to times that by 2x plus 1. And in terms of the order, I'm going to actually put the 2x plus 1 at the front, just so it matches this one. So it'll be 2x plus 1, and then in brackets, x minus 2. So as you can see, we've multiplied both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 2x plus 1. Okay, now we've got the same denominators, we can just add. So let's add them together and see what we get. So in terms of the denominator, it'll be 2x plus 1, brackets x minus 2. And then in terms of the numerator, we've got x plus 2x, that's 3x. And then we've got minus 2 plus 1, and minus 2 plus 1 will be minus 1. So that's what we get when we add together those algebraic fractions. Okay, so let's replace this with that, so we would have... 8x squared minus 2 over 6x squared minus 29x plus 9. And then we've got multiply by, and instead of this, we're going to write this. So we've got 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 1 brackets x minus 2. Okay, now at this point, we could multiply and then try and simplify. I'm actually going to simplify to begin with. So let's see if we can factorize anything. So here, these are both divisible by 2, so we would have 2 bracket 4x squared minus 1, just dividing both of those by 2. Actually, that's the difference between 2 squared, so we'll probably be able to factorize that again in a second. And then over. And then if we factorize this, we're going to get in brackets, bracket, bracket, bracket. And then we're going to have 3x and 2x. Okay, and then in terms of the numbers, they're going to multiply together to be 9. And when we expand our brackets, we're going to get minus 29x, so it's going to be a negative and a negative. And then I think if we put a 9 here and a 1 here, let's see if that works. 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times minus 9 would be minus 27x, so we're nearly there. And then minus another 2x would be minus 29x, and that's it. That's perfect. And then multiply by, and then we've got 3x minus 1 over, and then in brackets, 2x plus 1, close brackets, x minus 2. Okay, now let's deal with this difference between two squares here. So that'll be 2 and then in brackets, bracket, bracket, bracket. Square root in both of these would be 2x and 1, 2x and 1, 1 with a plus sign and 1 with a minus sign. So that's how we factorize that. Over, and then we've got 3x minus 1, 2x minus 9, and then here we've got multiplied by 3x minus 1 over, and then we've got 2x plus 1, and then x minus 2. Okay, and now before we multiply, let's see if we can cancel anything out. So we can divide this numerator and this denominator by 2x plus 1. We can divide this numerator and this denominator by 3x minus 1, so that would leave us a 1 there. And yeah, that's it. And then if we multiply, let's multiply the numerators together, that'll be 2 bracket 2x minus 1 on the numerator. We've just got this times this times 1, so that'll be that. Over, and then we've got 2x minus 9, and then x minus 2. And that's it. And I'd probably leave my answer like that. And if you wanted to, you could expand this to get 4x minus 2. And then if you expand this denominator, you get 2x times x is 2x squared. We then get 2x times minus 2, that's minus 4x, minus another 9x would be minus 13x. And then minus 9 times minus 2 would be plus 18. And that's it. So you can leave it as this or this. I probably would leave it like that. And that's it. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at the video solutions to the practice questions on algebraic fractions. I really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on algebraic fractions, if you watch videos 21, 22, 23, and 24 in Corporate Maths, they'll be useful for you as well. But I really, really hope you found this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.